Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Michael Noland and tonight we're going to be discussing the brand new pre-release track from the upcoming and highly anticipated uh, rock album from the band, yes, Mirror to the Sky. And of course, I'm talking about the track, the song, the piece, all connected. All right, folks, before we get to that, I do want to say thank you so much for all of you viewers. You know, whether you have subscribed to the channel or not, I certainly appreciate it. The channel's garnered well over 3 million views in such a short time. This time last year, we were at about a thousand subscribers and I was pleased. And by the way, if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe to the tribe button and you'll be notified of all of my future videos because I've got a few channel announcements coming very shortly and that way you'll be notified of those announcements right away. All right, so first of all, the album as a total clocks in at about 64 minutes, an hour and four minutes, but uh, it is also divided into two discs here and the last three tracks are identified as a bonus disc. Now with the release of All Connected, a story is starting to develop here and I can't wait to follow this story as we get further and further on and get a total release of this album. You see where the story really gets interesting is when you realize that that bonus disc or the last three tracks of nine tracks on this album, we have only one single writer credited. Every other track on this album, in other words, the first disc has at least two writers, usually three or more. So that's got me wondering, is that bonus disc coming from their lead guitarist as the writer merely instrumentals, I don't know. But for the time being, I'm going to focus on what I'm going to temporarily call the album proper. With the release of a second track out of six, we now have a clear view of one third of this album. Now, I gotta tell you, it took me about three listens to really get into the groove of this song. I love the intro now, but it was a little disjarring, especially after the ear candy of the first track that we've already covered. But as if to show this was not gonna be just another clone of a 90125 approach, they go right into full yes mode on this song. It has a symphonic feel, and that slide by Steve is wonderful. But then the band gels, and they get into a groove, and they show us for the second time in a row, they can write a damn great melody and some pretty damn good words. Now, I'm not saying every single line is gold, on this particular track. There are times when you miss the lighter touch and the more esoteric touch of John Anderson. But you know what? Overall, the lyrics are solid. The melody is wonderful. And what is it? About a minute and a half, a minute and 20 seconds where they get into this groove, right? And on first listen, you almost wish they had just kind of started from this place, right? But on further listenings, you realize that the intro, the over one minute intro for this song is absolutely essential because its motifs are repeated through the over nine minutes that this track encompasses. Oh, and the stereo separation on both of these tracks is wonderful. You feel like you're almost in a three-dimensional realm. You can almost feel the instruments coming from behind you on your left and going right through your brain and zooming out to your front right. I mean, it is amazing. The mixing on this album, there's been a lot of care given into the sound. I really dig the sound on this so far. By the way, stereo separation, I was talking about uh, the instrumentation. The vocal stereo separation here is used very artistically and adds a depth 
to this track that it would have lacked if they had taken a more center stage approach. And getting back to the lyrics here, the lyrics are now with the first song and this song have started to unlock what this undoubtedly concept album is all about. And so far, the general theme, even compared to the first track, is that everything is connected. And not only everything is connected, but it's connected on many, many levels. And the lyrics and all connected brings that out, that our differences are just static of the same thing, people. I love it. These are positive lyrics. These are healing lyrics. And with the music thus far on this album, this album may just well wind up being a prescription to the soul. Now, why do I say that? Well, take a look at what's left as far as titles on this album, because that may give us a clue about what this album is all about. We've talked about the first track, that we're all cut from the stars, that indeed everything is cut from the stars. With the very next track, we get all connected, and that even reiterates what uh, the first song talks about, right? Now we see a theme. Well, what about the rest of these tracks? The next one is called Luminosity. Now that's a theme that could fit very well into what we've described so far. The next track, Living Out Their Dream. Now keeping in mind the lyrics of All Connected, I would anticipate that this is about those who realize that and rise to a new and better level as individuals, but we'll see. Of course, then comes the title track, and it seems to allude the very same things directly that the first two tracks allude to. Mirror to the sky, and then that's followed by circles in time, folks. All right, so when you keep all of that in mind, the time element and everything, that could be very interesting. But man, you know what? I really miss these kind of albums, don't you? I know I come from a generation that found hours and hours of delight just pouring over liner notes and contemplating our navels, but you know what? There is part of what I think a whole new generation of music fans are missing. And if this album catches on, think about what that could do for a whole new generation of music lovers. I love it. Now that kind of gets us to the elephant in the room for many uh, hardcore Yes fans. Is this band even really Yes? And you know, that's not an easy question to answer, okay? So I will admit the tendrils to Yes are being stretched to the limit at the very least. Because you know what? As Yes fans, we all have our favorite core members. Some like the original lineup from the Yes album. My core membership that I would include as my favorite lineup for Yes would be John Anderson on lead vocals, Chris Squire on bass, Steve Howell on guitar, Rick Wakeman on keyboards, and Bill Bruford on drums. And as I said, the tendrils are starting to stretch here, aren't they? And we have excellent examples of similar tendrils being stretched in rock and roll to no avail. How about Foreigner? I mean, they have one single member, just like Yes, uh, their guitar player, left. He doesn't even show up for a lot of their gigs. And by the latest news, they actually seem sincere about calling it a day here shortly. But we have gotten nothing from that lineup that can compare to what Foreigner once was. And yet on this album, I, I just don't know how to explain it, folks. To me, so far, this is a Yes album. Therefore, these new members, oh, I hate to say it, are the new Yes. Now, I know I'm gonna hear from a ton of commenters 
on this video about how this current lineup ain't no yes in my book and I understand that completely and I want to see those comments if you don't agree with me that's what makes this channel exciting that's what makes this channel breathe and by the way folks if you enjoyed tonight's video please give it a thumbs up that helps so much with channel growth and all of that I've mentioned that in the past and of course I'm always going to encourage you to hit that subscribe to the tribe button because you know what then you'll get all those wonderful notifications and we can discuss wondrous stories together all right I'm Michael Nolan this of course is the bottom line as I see it and together folks we are the tribe I'll see you in my next video